There, here we go. All right, we're live. Laura Gillot. Got it. <laughs> thank you, name. Laura. Thanks for being here. We appreciate you. Laura is with Keller Williams in Lebanon between Eugene and Salem. Just in case you have any referrals, send them her way. Your referrals will be super happy because she takes care of them extremely well because she loves building relationships. That's what we're here to talk about. The thing that stood out uh, for me, Laura, when we did the breakout at Mega Camp, there were a lot of things that, that you impressed me on, but one thing I can't shake was the apple pie or that, that pie that you give away. I'm like, ah, I wanna do that. I wanna do that so badly because I love pie. So thanks for being on. What, what got you into real estate? Tell us a little bit about that beginning, your origin stories. Yeah, so I got into uh, the business in 1992. Um, I was going to school. I thought maybe I wanted to run my own daycare center. Um, and so I was uh, going to college for early childhood education. Um, I was lucky enough to buy our first house when I was 18, $5,000 down, $25,000 you know, house. Owner carry, $250 a month, 10% interest. Um, so did that and then bought a second one like three or four years later and thought, you know, I kind of like this real estate thing. I, I enjoyed going out and looking at property with my, with my realtor. And then my dad came up from California and I showed him property with the realtor. And then I thought, I think I want to transfer over and be a real estate agent. So I did that at the ripe age of 22 and, and it was just a natural fit for me. And then went from there on. So, and we're from a small town. So Lebanon, I don't know how small it was then, but right now, you know, it's about 16,000 people. Oh, and wow. About 300 uh, families served from Lebanon, um, which is about, you know, a 25% market share uh, for our area. And then our additional, um, we do serve about 500 families a year from, from the surrounding areas around Lebanon. And so um, we don't spend a lot of money on advertising. We don't buy clicks. We don't spend money on Zillow. Um, except for being a premier partner to get our listing leads. Um, but our mainly all of our stuff has been off working off our database and working referrals and working from um, client events and that sort of thing. So that's just kind of what it morphed into for us. I love that. So let, let's go deeper into that because I think that people, when, when they focus on their past clients and their sphere, like their core sphere, like you have over the last years, I think that's when they truly start building an actual business. Because regardless of where, they're, where the leads are coming from, online or offline, you still have to take care of them long-term for, for you to be able to have a business. And you've done that so well. So can, can you tell us a little bit about how that database works and how often you do reach out to them or bring them in in some way to touch them? Yeah, so, um, so we just started from the very beginning, like in 92, I had top producer, good old top producer. I still have that as a backup database for us. So anytime a client closes, we put them into the, to the database and they put what year they closed and now what partner they used on the team. And then uh, we invite them, we give them a, a monthly newsletter and that's just a custom creative newsletter from us through constant contact. And in that newsletter it has our giveaways, um, you know, what events we have coming up. Um, you know, we started off with doing one event a year, then two and then four. And then, you know, we were up to like 24 events when COVID hit and we had a shift Whoa. thing around. Yeah. So there was, there was a lot of different events that we do with our clients. And so that's how we get to see them all the time is that we'd be inviting them to different things like today, doing the coffee thing down at Sugar Vibes here at our little town, um, you know, giving away free donuts that they come in between seven and 10 o'clock this morning that we'll give them a coupon for a free donut or a free coffee. But it's just a chance for us to get face to face with them um, with the six foot distancing and a mask today. But, um, but we just try to always have something. So we try to make certain our newsletter has an item of value or something that we have coming up, like we have fall photo shoot coming up. So, you know, something that they're gonna wanna read so that way it's just not, it's not garbage, not junk mail. It's personalized to them. Um, and so, so that's kind of how that started, but you know, really how it started at the very beginning and because I wasn't with Keller Williams at that time, I was with a small independent brokerage, is that you remember when Texas Hold'em was really um, 
really big and people were having Texas Hold'em tournaments, at least it hit Oregon here. Um, and we started doing those and our Texas Hold'em tournament got to be between 80 to 100 people. Well, I realized in that room I had, wow. you know, the city attorneys, I had dentists, I had everyone from every walk of life and they would come in, you know, pay $25 and get a stack of chips and we'd sit around and play poker all night and, and have these tournaments and things. And then I'd take their picture and put it up on the wall in the shop and it was just a fun event. We'd potluck and things. Well, I realized we were doing these about once a month that a lot of my business was coming from these folks that were coming to these poker parties. And so I would, um, not that I'm a great poker player by any means, but I would pat, I would just, I'd play my blinds as I'd go through and I would be at every table and I wouldn't, I'd play when I had good cards and I would fold when I didn't. And I'd get, you know, normally get to play all night long and get to go to the final table. And I just realized I was able to network each table with each one of these folks and how much fun it was for one thing. And the other thing was that I got to create these relationships. And that was, so then when that kind of fizzled out and people stopped playing, then I thought, I think we got to find other events to bring everyone together because that the, the social part of it was the part that I really enjoyed. Um, and so then we just found other events to make that happen. And I can share my screen. I can go over some of our events that we've oh please that that was my next question i was going to ask you so so show me some of your events or tell me okay. about them so that's awesome so let's go into this put here a messy messy screen i just go down here to this and i'll play it so then we thought well what can we do you know what's some different events and things that we can do in our area and um our Boys and Girls Club um, partnered up with some local breweries and did like a brew fest. Okay. Um, and so we said, well, they asked us to be a sponsor of it. And I said, well, this is what I learned would be a sponsor. I, I, we don't agree to be a sponsor unless we put up our pop-up tent and we can be at the event. So just having my banner or having our banner next to the stage of the band does not get us any business. But if we go to the event and we can give something away, then we know we can get business from that. So I said, well, I will be a sponsor, but I want to be at the event. And I said, well, you don't sell beer. You don't play music. Here's really, what are you going to do? And I said, I don't know, just put us somewhere, put us on the end. I don't care. Just give us a place to do, and I'll give away a growler set. Um, and, and I'll, um, we'll be there and we'll just have fun. And they said, okay, we'll do it. So at first they were a little reserved, but they let us do it. So we gave away this little growler set and we advertised it on Facebook. We also gave away some VIP tickets that we got for being a sponsor. And from that, we had 431 people sign up for the, for the growler. We had 92 people, new people opt into our newsletter. We had 29 people request CMAs. We had 10 buyer appointments. So, Whoa. so I know I would not have gotten those results from a banner next to the stage. So being there and having an item of value to give away is good. Uh, what we found when we went through those, um, and, we, and this was canceled this last year because of COVID, but what we found when, when, we, when we looked through some of the CMA requests that I mm -hmm. think maybe drinking the beer maybe made them a little more optimistic that maybe if they marked yes that they need to see me. They may get picked for the growler. Um, it didn't all it didn't all pencil out, but it at least gives us an opportunity to call back and set up an appointment or do a drive by CMA, something to that nature. I just want to see. If, oh yeah, and then every year at the beginning of the year uh, on New Year's Day we do a um, New Year's Eve event. So we have it at our office. We invite our clients to come down. We put it on social media. Come in. Um, we realize that you just do it for a short period of time, like no more than three hours. And um, this, we have normally a theme. So this last year, of course, was the Roaring Twenties. And we have people come in and we have a drawing. Um, you know, we had over, you know, 100 families stop by, 150 pieces of chicken. We just had the Traeger out back, you know, six gallons of orange juice for mimosas. Um, and had 71 families signed up for the drawing and 13 requested to be on our newsletter. Six wanted to buy our consultation and nine wanted CMA requests. So wow. one, it's like three hours on New Year's Day, and it's and it's a great time to to have everyone come by. Normally, everyone has that day off, and so and there's not a lot to do on New Year's Day, <laughs> so they would pop by the office. Um, and you know, I, I kind of put this in here is that you know another team, and I I marked out their name on that day. They uh, made calls and uh, just crushed the phones that day. And it was someone in Gary Keller's group. And they said, you know, that they crushed it. They set 30 appointments, which was awesome. But now they said, however, we have a few haters giving us bad reviews on Facebook, you know, favor, you know, would your team give us some five-star reviews so we, you know, can bury those bad reviews. But I'll let you know from doing this, 
we got no bad reviews and we got business <laughs> that day. and we didn't well, have to, we didn't have yeah. to call anybody that makes sense right I so mean, laura I have, a, I have a question about this yes with 2021 what I is know. This, what is this going to look like because now i'm like i'm like oh i want to try something like this what are you thinking of doing and so it, well, I have to see how things roll out here after the election, everything gets done, how, how this is all going to be and, and things. But we still have been doing some events. We just make certain that, the, that people are masks um, okay. when they come in and that we're doing um, that we're. And the hardest thing about the mask thing is that there's a couple people in our town that have turned people in for not, not having their masks. And some people are, we're pretty redneck here in Oregon. We're pretty redneck here in Little Lebanon, Oregon. And so people are like, you know, I don't want to wear a mask. Well, if they don't want to wear a mask, then you're a liability. You have to ask them to leave. So we did end up canceling one event. We were going to do um, a, a con like an outdoor parking lot party with a, with a gentleman that wanted to release his album and sing. And, and we were going to invite everyone to come. But mm -hmm. a couple of people had gotten turned in for it. And I thought, you know what? We can't tell people to leave because that would hurt our business probably more than having them stay. So we ended up having the gentleman do a concert in um, in my yard, and we did a live feed on um, on Facebook and invited everyone to come to the live feed and join That's us. Cool. And we gave away like fifty of his CDs, and we had like I think it's around four thousand people view that um, and that, uh, wow. that live feed of that the concert and it was wonderful. And we just had a few team members there and a few of his family members there and we did a barbecue and stuff, but it, it wasn't so public. So we moved that event from, from being at the office and we were gonna be outside and have masks, but it is a little bit tough when you, you know, if someone doesn't wear a mask, you do have to tell them they have to mask up. You know? Yeah, that's a, that's a very interesting situation. So then can, can you talk about the event that you're doing right now that you're not, at but yes. um what is it you said donuts how yeah, so we have a, a place which someone here has their little donut shop here great the best donuts in the world and we have uh two agents possibly three we have uh, an optional third person and they have a little sign and it's by the door and it says you know something about donuts and they we invited our past clients and people that are in our VIP group that they're welcome to come down between 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and get a free donut or a free uh, coffee on us. And as they walk in, we and, and no matter who's walking through the door, we're giving them the free certificate. And so, oh, and I yeah. like that. Yeah, so whoever walks the door, so it gives us a chance to have opportunity to have conversations and stuff where people are doing it and they're masked up. And they're at the door giving away free certificates and you know and we have all of our july gear on and that good good stuff where they do um so and how that kind of came to play is our title company every time we close a transaction they give us like four little cards for free coffee or free donuts mm -hmm. and we just don't we just don't drink coffee or eat that many donuts and so we had a stack of probably 200 of them and i said i went to my marketing director and said what are we gonna do with this big old stack of cards like we need to get rid of these she goes, well, don't we do a thing where we call, we'll just give those away when you stand at the door. So they're already through those cards already this morning. So I just said, just have them tally up, you know, uh, how many more uh, donuts and coffee and we'll just write them a check at the end. So you could do it without that. But that's kind of what started it. So we had a ton of cards to give away. I love it. So I have some questions about that. Yes. Oh, tell me about the VIP group. Is that, do you put everybody into that that's in your database? How does that work? So just our raving fans. So if you send us a referral, or you um, or you're, you close a transaction with us, then we invite you to be in a private VIP group that's on uh, Facebook. And on that Facebook group is another place that we post and say they say things that we're doing. It's just a private group that just just to those folks because we can't offer a free donut to everyone in town. You know what I mean? And and we can't offer you know. Some things like this, like the Roaring Twenties, we can offer to anybody in town because it's just come in. If we run, when we run out of food, we run out of food, you know, that sort of mm -hmm. thing um, to make it, you know, affordable. Um, but the VIP group, when we want to do something a little extra special, then we just put it into our VIP group that's on there. So it's something we've done and it's, it's worked well. It's just a good way for us to communicate with our clients and not send them newsletters and sending them a lot of an emails. So we can do a lot of reminders and stuff on the VIP group. All right. So do you only communicate with your VIP group through the Facebook group that you create, or do you send them a newsletter as well? 
yeah, newsletter as well. So mm -hmm. once a month they get the newsletter and then they get the reminders and things on the VIP group. Perfect. So everybody yesterday in that Facebook group, you're, you're already promoting, Hey, yeah. this is what's next. Be sure to yeah. show up. Be sure. To, oh, yeah. Yeah. Very. We're doing every Tuesday in November, the donut thing. So they can, if they miss this week. They can go the next week. All right. So you're raving fans only and people that have referred you clients. Yes. And that's who our raving fans are. Okay. And so what we do with our raving fans is that we, we keep a spreadsheet and um, we, when uh, they call in or they refer a, a buyer or seller to us or anybody, you know, even someone with real estate questions, we then put them on a spreadsheet. And then once a quarter, we invite them to come to dinner. And so then they, we go through and invite them to come to a dinner. And then um, we do those dinners four times a year. And then we put them into the VIP group and we put them as a raving fan. So even people that haven't bought in with us are still get to be in, included in our events if they send us a referral. Well, I like that. I like yeah. it. So that's, that's the in. They have to refer something to you in order to be part of the VIP. Right. And do they, do they, does, do people actively know that or do you just surprise them? Be like, hey, surprise. Well, when we, what, so what happens is that we normally post some photos, you know, on our Facebook about our referral dinner. And what will happen occasionally is that someone will call and go, hey, I sent you a referral, you know, Bob Smith, you know, I didn't get invited to the dinner. And I'll say, oh, you know what, you know, we, I apologize for that, we'll get you onto the next dinner. But when we asked Bob Smith who referred us, he said several people, he didn't give me one name. So I didn't know it was you and I apologize about that. But next time if you have a referral, just call me directly and let me know you're referring Bob Smith so that way you can get on to the next dinner. And they'll go, okay, that sounds great. So, you know, and we have, what I found out over the years, so we've done this now for like three to four years, is that the same people almost end up at the referral dinner every quarter. So we have some people that are referring, like they're referring to get on to the next referral dinner. So they know, <laughs> and, I, and I've even had one of them say, I gave you two referrals this quarter. Can I come to this dinner and the next dinner? So, oh. so they, 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 you know, they want to know that qualified for two dinners, you know, so they know, they know what we're doing. It's, it's not a secret or anything. And it also kind of teaches them that they really need to call us and not just give us, give our name out. I mean, that's great if they give our name out and they call us, but they very well could get missed for the referral dinner. Yeah, that's very true. All right. So with the referral, the referral just has to be given. It doesn't have to be closed, right? No, nope, it doesn't have to be closed. No. Nope, All right. Cool. So we want to reward the behavior of I love that you're, you're, you're training them. Yes. I yes. really, really love that. Last week we had um, the Peters on. Yes. Was, cool. they, they were talking about something very similar in, in the sense of rewarding that behavior. Yeah. So very, very awesome. So question from Fabiola, I think. Let me see. I'm going to go through a couple of these. Two there it is. Yeah. Uh, where do you hold the dinners? Or... I guess a better question would be, where are you going to hold the dinners now? Yeah, so now we're holding them at uh, my house. So we have um, eight acres and a, we have an RV barn that works out now as like a event pavilion <laughs> next to our house. And so we'll have a caterer come in, we'll set up tables, we'll have it, it it's semi outside. Um, and so we'll have it there. So before that, we would have it at a, a, one of our local restaurants, but because we're over 10 people, um, we can't have it at the restaurant. So we, have, we just have it at the house. And then um, we did have it already last quarter and people wore their masks, except when they were sitting down to eat. And um, we were outside, so there was you know not as much confinement. We had tables and stuff set out on the back patio and things. And it was just a nice, played some music and it was just a nice evening. And there's no agenda there. There's no, no nothing. They come in, they get to eat and leave. Uh, no speeches, no nothing. Just to thank them for, for their referrals and have a nice dinner. Like, let me take something off your plate this week. Come and, come and have dinner with us. I love that. That's so Pretty good. Simple. Yes. Uh, I really like that. I put that in my notes. So then tell me, what is this? Because I love pie. Yes. <laughs> so uh, pie, uh, the Pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving was one of our biggest events and, and the most referrals. So we thought, um, you know, if that's so good, why don't we do it again for apple pie for the 4th of July? So on July 3rd, we give away pies. Um, this was um, not last year, but the year before. And we gave away 357 pies 
last year through COVID, we gave away 700 pies. And how we did the 700 pies is, yeah, yeah. So we, the nice thing is, so to get to get a pie, we call through our database. So we print out all of our past clients and our raving fans. We divide it up amongst the team and everyone calls a section of people and invite them for a pie. Um, and so when we call them and they say yes, then they reserve their pie and um, they get then their pie gets ordered. And so we so we realized that during COVID, more people were home, more people were picking up the phone. So more people said yes on wow. that. So we went from 357 to 700 pies. Um, this was two years ago. So we had, you know, 19 people sign up for CMAs, 29 buyers um, signed up for, you know, buyer consultations or said they had a buying need. And we normally served hot dogs and chips and things. So on the new one, I will say that I think our referral part was down. I, I need to look back at those numbers. I don't have it memorized, but I think our CMAs that are up, the buyer consultations were down on it, but we just had people drive through our parking lot and then we just handed them their pie masked up. And so there wasn't as much chit chat, you know, like here, like we have tables and people sitting out and having lunch and stuff with us. We didn't have that then. So the majority of our CMAs come in. So we call them on the phone, you know, ask them if they want a pie, ask them if they can whip us up a referral between now and pie day, we'll throw in a can of whipped cream. Um, and if they can give us a referral right then, then we put that into the system that they're a whipped cream, um, you know, recipient <laughs> and uh, we get the referral information. And then between now and pie day, it's normally about a month and a half, we start sending them reminders, you know, uh, 30 more days for pie day and on that uh, reminder there's a big can of whipped cream and if they click on the whipped cream it says send us a referral and they have a google form to send us a referral so majority of the referrals come in before pie day so love that just to let you know that's so. interesting I, I really like that so let's talk about a little bit more on the pie and then let's let's talk about some of the dynamics like process systems before and after but yes. pie, i want to know do you make all these pies? <laughs> no, we get we get these pies from Walmart. So, oh, that's and, even better. Do you plan yeah. ahead though? Do you call them and be like, I need? Yeah. Okay. Yes. And I'll let you know this year, um, should, I should say, this, these are Walmart pies. When we called Walmart this year for pies, which was about two months ahead of time, they said with COVID going on, I don't know if we're gonna have the supplies. I don't know if we can fill the order. So then we went to Costco and said, you know, we need pies. And they said, you know what, with COVID going on, I don't think we're gonna be able to fill the order. So we went to our local Safeway um, and the Safeway here in our local grocery store said, yes, we can do the pie order. We'd love to, we'd love to be your resource. And they made us 700 pies for $5 a pie. And they ended up having to throw some berry pies in there, which ended up was great. People love the berry pies too, because they ran out of apple pie. Um, but they were able to get all that done. But in normalcy, without COVID, no problem getting pies. You know, you can get them in. So anyhow, they're, they're great things to do. And as I said, people love them. It gives us a chance to call our database twice a year, our past clients and our raving fans, because we don't get on the phones and call as much as we probably should. That's very true. Now, this is, I have an important question here. How, how did that, how did the pie you ended up with compare to the Costco pie? <laughs> so the, Actually, the apple pie from Safeway was great. This apple pie is great. It's not as big as the Costco pie, but if you get the Costco apple pie, it's like 12 bucks. So it's way more expensive. Well, yeah, it's also like the size it's of the huge. table. Right? Yeah, yeah. And the oh. pumpkin pie is huge too. I think the next slide is pumpkin pie here. So we do the Costco pumpkin pies. They run about $6 each on that. And then the same thing, people come in, get their pies. This was, we haven't, we'll, we'll do this again this year. If it's too COVID-y, we'll do a, We'll do the drive-through again, um, but this is again, if they come in and give us a, a, a referral, we do the whipped cream, they can sign up there. You can see on the table, there's places to sign up. They have a referral right then at the time they can sign that up. And then also for pumpkin pie, we normally do the chili cook-off that same day. So the uh, our team members all put in a crock pot of chili and do their favorite ones and the clients vote on the chili and, and uh, they have a great time doing that. And we have a chili cook-off winner. Uh, for the team and they get a little something extra special and this is actually at our office so we built a new office in 2017 and um what we realized when we built our office is that we wanted to have more of the entertaining space and area at our office to do a lot more events at the office and so we set that up we made a back patio on it and and some areas to to have 
um, our functions at the office. So it's worked out really well. That's so that. cool. I love that. You bring them in in the day, morning time, middle of the day, and then they come back for the chili cook-off. That's so well, cool. No, they actually chili cook-offs from noon, from, from, yeah, from like it's 11 to one, we have the chili cook-off. So a lot of people come during that time. So that way they can get uh, chili. They do both then at the same time? Uh, yes, during the same time. Yeah, Perfect. they get their pie and get chili. All right, so are you thinking you're going to do the pumpkin pie giveaway this year too? Yes. Yeah, we'll start calling here in the next 10 days and start reserving pies for, for and then we'll, I don't know about the chili cook-off though. It may be, that may have to be on hold this year. All right, so you said, can we go to the screen where you showed how many pies you, you gave away last year, pumpkin pies? Uh, right here. So we gave away 932 pies and actually we ran out of pies. And you can see the numbers on pumpkin pie are lower than apple pie. There was only 19 CMAs and 21 buyer appointments. So it seems like on the market analysis sides, there's less uh, people asking for market analysis in on, around you know November than there is in the summertime. So if, yeah. if you had to do one pie, I might be doing the apple pie and not the Thanksgiving pie, but we do both. Well, yeah. Yeah, and so I like I like the idea. That, well, you're still getting your name out there, though. Yeah. That's I think that's yeah. the important part. I think this plays a lot like social media. When people look at me and they're like, "Well, what's the ROI I'm posting on Facebook every day?" I'm like, "There's a massive ROI on it, right? It's just you've got to give, 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 and then you finally get back because you're working on your branding." Right. I think this this is beautiful. Now, if if we get the numbers from this year of what you gave away apple pie, you gave away like 700 apple pies yes. during COVID. We haven't hit the COVID month of November yet. Do you anticipate breaking a thousand then for sure? What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I'm guessing we will. And, and we did run out of pies during this. <laughs> and so we did have to run and get pie, all the pumpkin pies in town. I'm sure we did over a thousand last year because we were grabbing pies from everywhere. <laughs> so that's, this is the first time we've ever ran out of pie. So normally when, when we do our pie order, even if they say, yes, we're going to come get a pie and we text them and we remind them about getting their pie, about 10% forget to get their pie. So we give the extra pies to the soup kitchen here in town. So they come and pick up the extra pies. But this day we realized we were running out of pies. So um, don't know exactly the difference on it. We do have a new marketing director um, that started with us this last year. And so I think she really was reminding people of about coming and getting their pies and people didn't forget. And somehow we, and you know, you always have those people that show up to get their pie because they've seen an email, but they didn't actually RSVP it. <laughs> That's right. All right. So let's, let's talk about that. Um, first, what's the population of, of, Lebanon? Uh, Lebanon? Yeah, I yeah. was going to call it Lebanon, but obviously. That's all good. Totally <laughs> wrong. So yeah, Lebanon. Totally good. Um, so our population is 16,800. So you're going to give away over a thousand pies. That's, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's insane. Yeah. So, that's so good. I, I love that a lot. So yeah. And the funny thing about the $6 pie, people will drive to come get their free pie. And I know it's just not for that $6 pie because some of them live in Albany where there's Costco. You know, they can get it for $6 also. Um, but I think they just do so one so they could see their agent again, so they could chit chat, so they could show us photos of the improvements they made on their home, that they can relive that connection they had with their agent. So yeah. I guess the important part of that too is that if you're not having a great connection with your agent, you're not giving them joy, stellar customer service, you're not showing integrity, it doesn't matter what you give them, they're not going to come pick up nothing. So you've got, so cool. they've got to have that feeling during that. And I think they come back for the pie so they can have that that camaraderie back with, with the team. You're so right. it's more about that relationships, nurturing. We, we say we do relational real estate. That's, that's our key to this. Yeah, very true, very true. All right, question now about the preparation for this, all right? Yep, yep. So we have checklists for every event that we do. We call them playbooks, but we have checklists. And before, um, about a month before the event, we'll start even sometimes longer than that, start working on our checklist. Um, we do have admin staff now. So we have, you know, an admin staff about 10 folks that on our team that we can delegate to that will help get everything set up and done. Um, and then 
then we would just work through that checklist. And then after the event, we go back and look at our checklist and say, what did we forget? What fell through the cracks? What did someone have to run to the store to go grab? You know, you know, how many hot dogs did we serve? You know, how much chili did we go through? Uh, just, tr just try to take those notes right away. And then we'll revise our checklist for the next year. So, That's awesome. All right. So the checklist includes everything from something complicated, like making sure the pies are actually there to who's going to be there, who's going to be in front giving the pies and what yeah. time people show up that day and so forth. Yeah. So we have our sign up sheets. We have, you know, how many extension cords we need, how many pop up tents we need, how many tables we need, you know, everything down to the nitty gritty. You know, do we need chairs? Um, you know, anything that we need, we just make certain we put on that event. So okay. we try to put everything in, in that thing so we don't have to run around. In, at the beginning, and I have MAPS coaching, and when I first met with my um, MAPS coach, she's like, you know, who's doing this? I'm like, I kind of have it all in my head. I just delegate to folks. And she says, you need to have this thing running like if something happened to you and you weren't there anymore. Yeah. You need to have so anybody can pick up that checklist and do it without you running around like chicken with your head cut off. And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. So we just started compiling <laughs> You know the lists of, of the checklists and it's worked out really well so now they pretty much can run you know without me giving giving much effort to it and i so, love that all yeah. right so tell me with COVID happening in in i'm you know still now i don't, yeah. I don't think it's going to change very much from now no. to <laughs> what what are you going to run this like in november just to give us a better idea of what we can run events like if we were yeah. to do so we'll in our parking lot we'll probably have our pop-up tent there and we'll have the cone set up and we'll have a drive through uh, you know line for them to drive through and they'll be able to drive through we do it from eight in the morning to six at night we'll have them drive through and pick up their pie and 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 go and um, start calling them here in the next you know 10 days and then we'll start you know letting them know if they can whip us a referral we can throw in a can of whipped cream and we'll have everything set up that day for them to just do the drive through so probably not doing the chili feed this year um, and anything to that nature. We probably won't have them get out of their cars. And, um, and then hopefully it will just run like clockwork. And then you start at what time and end at what time you said? We start at eight o'clock in the morning and then we end at six o'clock at night. Wow. So it's, it's an all day event. So and we just what? mark it out. It's the day before Thanksgiving. It's the day before uh, 4th right. of July. Um, and it's just an all day event. So we people can pick up their, their pies, you know, prior to work, after work, during their, their breaks. I love this. All right. Day before Thanksgiving. Yeah. That's so cool. So then tell me what happens after, do you follow up with a lot of these people or are they the ones calling you and texting you and showing you how they ate their pie and just being so happy. So tell me about after. So after we do get people posting their pies on social media and thanking us for the pies and all that great stuff. So that's all really good. And then really the only follow up we do after the event is the, with the referrals we get um, from the event. So we'll follow up with those, those referrals. Um, and other than that, we don't bug our clients a whole lot. I mean, we don't call and, and, you know, when they have real estate needs, you know, we're hoping after getting a couple pies from us and being invited to different events that they'll call us, you know, they're not going to think about calling anybody else. Um, and also that they're going to give us their referrals. So, you know, and we've had people, you know, that have listed with other folks and, and they're still on our pie list. I mean, we did business with them the, the time before and we still call them for a pie and they come and they'll say, oh, I apologize. I don't know what happened. I called the person on the sign. I got wrapped up. I, you know, did that. And, you know, I won't stray again. It was an awful experience or whatever they say, um, you know, and they're still family to us. So, but it is an awkward, you know, it, it, it is an awkward <laughs> totally. So, uh, so I, I, I don't think that they'll do it again. You know, they'll, they'll remember next time, like, yeah, that was kind of awkward. I don't want to, go to the, 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 you know, a party to, at theirs and have my, somebody else listed on my sign. That's so true. That's yeah. so true. All right. So then how, how do you come up with ideas on what events to do next? Do you guys get together as a team? Do you mm -hmm. just mastermind with, with your coach? What, how does this work? Yeah. So at the beginning of the year, we set our events for the entire year. So we'll look through and we, we do a lot with like the chamber in town. So 
you know, National Night Out is a chamber event. We'll pair up with them. They have a business expo. We'll pair up with them. They have some home shows at the, at the fairgrounds. We'll pair up with them. So we'll put all those events on our calendar and find those dates. And then we'll sprinkle in our own events on top of that. And so our main thing is that we just try to plan it in advance. Um, so, you know, I say building relationships sometimes is hard and think life gets busy. So you have to be strategic about making certain that you're stopping and having those events throughout the year. And right. this year definitely has been more difficult on us doing that. We, you know, had to do like some reverse bolds. Uh, I was trying to think what else we did. We, we did some photo shoots. We did dropping off uh, signs for graduation for kids that graduated from school. And, did, you know, we just have done things a little bit differently this year without doing a massive group together. So just more like small individual things. We're going to do some pumpkin drop offs, um, you know, to our, uh, our people that we're working with now. We'll do some pumpkin drop, drop offs to our clients. Um, so just trying to keep it more you know more porch porch you know going by and setting something on the porch and having a long conversation i love that so then tell me what are you excited about event wise for 2021 <laughs> you know what we have not even started our event book for next year because it is because we don't know what's going to happen you know that's the hardest thing is that we just don't know so we're waiting for a green light to have you know, more than, you know, 2,500 people together. Um, it is tough when you have a large database um, to do something like this um, too, because you, you just would say, okay, I want to get together, but I only like referral dinner is great because if you send us a referral, you get to come. So it's a smaller group, but mm -hmm. doing something that you have something to your VIP group or something to your database, your past clients, and you know, it's going to be more than a hundred people. I don't want to pick and choose. So it is making it more, more difficult on that. So it, 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 I'm, I'm struggling there a little bit, to tell you the truth. All right, so what, what events do you have planned for January? Anything uh, for, for New Year's? How, how yeah. is New Year's gonna look? So we're still talking about, we put it on the calendar to do our New Year's party. And so we'll mm -hmm. just do it mass step and we'll, we have, if it's warm enough, we can do stuff on the back patio with the patio heaters. You know, and just try to keep it outside. We could go without masks on. We'll just have signs saying if you come to the building, you have to have your mask. And we'll just have some fire pits and some things out there and do some cocoa and, and, and uh, things of that nature and, and just still make it fun and invite people. And if people are good about going out, then great, they can come. And if they don't, if they don't feel like they can or they're feeling like it's too much risk, then they can stay at home. So we'll still have our, our New Year's party this year. I and love then from it. there, we'll see what happens <laughs> on there. I was just going to flip through here, see if there was anything else. We do the movie night. And you, you, you could still do movie night right now because they're still allowing you to do movies. So that would still be something that we could do. And we normally do that in February. So that will be something that will come on to that. And it's the same thing. We fill out the, Zoom, we fill out the Google form, uh, invite our database and say, you know, if you'd like to come to the movie, fill this out. They fill out this Google form to let us know, do they have any real estate needs that coming year? Um, when are you considering selling your home? Do you want to cover comp and master analysis? And before the event, we already have all of our referrals and our business from that. And when they get to the event, then they, we just welcome them. They walk through, they get their free popcorn, their free pop, and they go sit down at, at the movie event. So it's, it's a nice. fun event. And that's National Night Out. So National Night Out was canceled. <laughs> so that's something that's off the plate for, for last year. And that's a free event to us that we do, but it's in town and we, we give away a, a package and, and we get, you know, 15 CMAs and 39 buyer consultations. Wow. From that. So it's a good event to do. So I'm, I'm definitely missing it. So I don't know. All this stuff is, unfortunately, a lot of the stuff is canceled. This expo is canceled. <laughs> you could so, do a national Zoom night out. Yeah, there you go. That would be fun. <laughs> we've, we've actually tried a couple Zoom events, um, but it's, it's difficult. It's so hard with there's so many people on and people are talking over each other and yeah, you know, it, it is, Probably. it is really difficult. It yeah, is. And we still do our, we do our buyer and seller classes. So we have that. I'll see if I have that on here, on here somewhere here. Oh, oops. I don't know where it's at. These are all of our events. <laughs> so we're still doing this one. We're doing the, uh, we have an old truck. We fill it up with pumpkins. And they mm -hmm. fill out a Google form. They sign up for their family. Our photographer that does our photography for our real estate does the photography for um, for the families, and they just do 
photos and we're able to get relationships and and if they have any real estate needs from this too that's so cool yeah and then afterwards we just leave the truck parked outside the the office and just tell them anytime they come by they can come by and, and jump on and take um photos anytime they want um i kind of made up this i don't know if i have it on here i made up this thing a link that they would pick just like a liability release for them to come do this but really what i really wanted them to do if they're going to come use the truck to take their photos on their own time just here 24 7 um was i really wanted to see if they had real estate needs so they, they signed something said they're doing it their own liability mm -hmm. and then it says you have any real estate needs so it was just a way yeah. for us to collect the information <laughs> on there to see if they would Art. yeah yeah so anyhow it was fun so i don't know lots of good things these are our referral dinners at our place so of course it won't look like this you know because we i should have took a picture of the one we have now now out in the yard we have round tables and we divide and we we spread everyone out nice so, yeah well i think you've adapted pretty well and you're still adapting so yeah it, yeah. it should be good you're gonna have to give me an update on your pumpkin pie giveaway. I'm yes, I will definitely do that. <laughs> I'm excited to hear what happens then because that's gonna be pretty powerful. So yeah, yeah. As I said, the apple pie I think was great just because people were answering the phone. They, people are not as busy as they once were, yeah. and so you know, I thought of swinging by and taking for pie was no big deal. I think before when things get so busy, they're like, yeah, I don't know if I have time to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's. True. Very true. Yeah. Laura, anything that I missed that you wanted to bring up? Hmm. No, just, you know, as I said, any, any event you do, definitely, you know, have a prize or giveaway, have people sign up on it, on the um, referral form, to, you know, ask, ask for their information. And then also, if you're having something with your client event, have some kind of Google form or something signed up for them to sign up prior to coming to the event and then ask them ahead of time if they have any real estate needs or if they have any referrals. So that way you don't have to be that person at the event asking them there. When they're yeah. at the event, you should be able to focus on them, make them feel super special and it not be salesy or, or you know, you're just inviting them there because you want to try to pump them from information on referrals and if they have any real estate needs. When you're there, you're just there to enjoy their time with them. I love that. That's probably the best advice there. Ask for referrals before. Yeah, before. I love that. All right. Laura, thanks for being on. Again, Laura is from the Lebanon? Yeah, Lebanon, Oregon. Between Lebanon, Oregon area. Yeah. area. So uh, if you have any referrals for her. Also close to what you said, Salem and Eugene, Eugene. right? In between, yeah. so you cover yeah. both areas. Yeah. Not, not too bad, not too bad. Thank you for being on. So if you have any referrals, send them her away. Laura, let's connect later too. I'd love to, to pick your brain on future things as well. Awesome. And Elizabeth says, give Janice a hug for us. Oh, uh, we definitely will do that. So love that. Thank you again for being on and hope to see you soon, but we'll talk. That sounds great. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Bye. everyone.